Hey, it's Ricky Burke, CyberSec People. Welcome to the first Hacking Into Security of 2018. So I'm sat here with my friend Mike Monick. Howdy. Um, so Mike is gonna ask, answer a few questions um, and hopefully give some advice to those looking to break into the InfraSec industry. So Mike, who are you? Oh, that's a big question. Uh, well, I am a, currently a penetration tester uh, for PrivateSec, um, but I guess a, bit, a little bit more about me, I would say I've usually, uh, well, I've been in security for a very long time, um, probably just before high school kind of thing. Uh, a couple of crazy events have thrown me through there, um, but I now work on the majority of my stuff is obviously penetration testing, um, but then also drones and everything surrounding drone security. Um, and I guess my uh, main kind of focus areas are OSINT or research into things like um, ISIS, cartel groups and the kind of fun stuff that isn't just the, the normal run-of-the-mill kind of pen testing, but um, yeah. Cool. So why do you do what you do? Um, I've had a, a long-term fascination with security, so um, you can ask my probably my, my grandma or look at any of the Christmas presents that I've received for years, but probably all of them have been somehow related to security, whether they be books or, you know, little tools I can play with um, or whatnot. So um, to be to be honest, one of my first reasons I got into the area was I used to be an avid, um, I used to go to the skate park all the time, ended up breaking a couple of bones and ended up focusing um, almost all my time on the stuff I loved, which is, you know, computers and gaming. And um, that really put me onto a path of just wanting to break everything I found. Uh, I saw vulnerabilities and everything, uh, more than new developing tech, emerging tech. Um, you know, back in, in 2011 and 12, you know, I found stuff like you know, cryptocurrencies and well, the blockchain. So that kind of had my interest for a bit. Um, IoT had my interest, hence why drones now. Um, but what I do is usually because I see something that could be a little bit more secure and how I would secure it for myself, um, you know, and. I, the different thing is that I would want to be secure in my own uh, personal life, and I see that I can help others do that as well, um, either through consultancy or, or kind of friendly chat. So um, that the I guess the mystery of it all, um, and also just my passion has come from all of that, the curiosity. I so guess started with breaking bones and then breaking computers. Oh yeah, or networks. It's a flow on effect. <laughs> right. Be careful! Don't break too many bones; it could lead to. All the uh, all the systems falling down in front of you. So you, you had a passion. How then did you transfer that into landing the, you know, where you are now? How did you get into the industry? Yeah, interesting. Um, usually, you find when you're younger, you don't have as much of a, a community, you know, feel or a community to lead on. You actually don't know it's out there or it exists. Um, so mine probably came more through through mentors. Um, obviously, I met people online and I chat to them and, and that kind of thing. Um, but we were all kind of individuals. I think my my biggest breaks were um, there was a few things that happened to me at high school, and and by some you know crazy reason I managed to get into university for it. Um, but I started studying security at university, and I found out you know a lot of the technical stuff and the practical stuff I knew, uh, the theoretical stuff you know not so much that came with you. Um, but a lot were mentors. So people I met through places like university, um, you know, two six hundred meetups or what have you, that ended up uh, talk to this person, talk to that person. Opportunities opened up. And I think there was a few people even at university who introduced me to um, some people in defence as well, which ended up, you know, ended up doing a short stint over there. Um, someone I worked with uh, further on in, in BAE ended up getting involved with drones. So. I feel like everything that I've done is related to meeting a person or talking to a person, um, and each one's kind of piqued my interest in an area where I go, I want to do that, um, or look into that or research that a little bit more. All right, cool. So uh, let's say you've got a friend, relative, someone that you care about, they're interested in security, they're looking for their first job. Obviously things may have changed the last couple of years. What steps would you advise them? How, how can they go and get their first job, in your opinion? Yeah, great question. So, um, first, you, you kind of have to look into what exactly you want to do. Um, security's got a lot of areas, you know, the pen testing, the security analysts, the GRC, um, and all of, the, you know, all of them are pretty important in their own ways, but you need to pick one um, that you want to do and, and what really doesn't just feel like a hobby, but something you know you can grind through and do work. At. Um, and I think, you know, I've watched some of your previous videos and some of them mentioned it is a grind. Some of it, you, you have to be able to write good reports, you have to, you know, hack stuff and, and do it for client. Um, but the biggest thing is being able to know that technical aspect and being able to really relay that to someone who wants to hire you. 
they want to hire you because they want to make money. You're the best way of helping out their clients, and so together you make a pretty good match. So, um, in my opinion, um, I got into a lot of the the being able to hack into a legally, uh, or sorry, I guess the better word for it would be a deliberately vulnerable environment. So through capture the flag, um, those kind of competitions allow you to you know have a competitive setting. Uh, you verse other people, or you you know you hit those challenges, and you slowly start to learn um, the different you know tools, technologies. But most of all, you get experience from different systems, um, so different servers, different technology types, different languages, and it means once that's all going to your head, it starts forming a bigger puzzle of technology as a whole. Okay. Um, so I definitely put down you know capture the flag or CTFs as you know little war games that you can do mm. um, to get hands-on skill. Um, for the practical, you just need to be reading in the area, even if it's 20 minutes a day. Just keep on reading. Um, read white papers, read books, whatever comes so up. So that's the knowledge side of things. What about actually landing a job? What happens, in, in your opinion, how could someone do that today? Um, sure, a lot of it comes across networking. Um, you talk to the right people, but uh, I'd say people are always looking for you to fill a solution or a problem or a hole. Um, that they have and they want to hire you to mm. fix that. So on top of just the stock standard, you know, being able to have the practical theoretical knowledge, you need to have something of a niche. Uh, you need to have an area that you are uh, either different to the rest or you know a little bit more than others know. Um, you can be the go-to person for that. You become indispensable. So um, for example, I kind of mulled over an area that I might be good at that companies want. At first it was, you know, OSINT and being able to search things up. Um, a little bit more advanced, but that didn't become something that I saw had a cost-benefit, you know, um, kind of result. So, something like drones, where it's an emerging tech, I'm able to spend a lot of my time in it. On top of pen testing, um, that can become a niche area. Uh, I've seen people have niche areas in everything from, you know, uh, VoIP devices to um, Bitcoin to whatever you have. You know, uh, there's a lot of options there. So, find something you can be good at and you can spend your own time. Become, I guess, a, a leader in that area of that knowledge. Um, and then share that knowledge with people you know. Let yourself become known for that um, as the you know the computer guy or the drone guy or whatever it might be. Okay. So that has some sort of specialism, add some value basically, some industry or specialist knowledge. Um, and then how would you, how would people know about you? Or would you, know, would you apply for a job online? Or how did you get your first job, for example, in that respect? Sure, so um, first job was actually uh, well, it's probably with defence, but I'd, I'd say BAE Systems was my first kind of full-time um, going to a role that I've actually searched for. And that was simply attending a, a, a talk or a lecture um, where a visiting speaker came to talk about you know, oh. hacking to IoT. Um, and I went and I gave him a... I, I chatted to him about IT, IoT a little bit, but um, my thesis was based on capture the flag. And so I talked to him about, mm. talked to him about this. Um, and he thought the idea of a, a CTF or a capture the flag could apply to his organization. So um, I ended up getting hired for that role uh, initially. So um, networking is just one of those crucial ones. And it doesn't necessarily mean going and trying to just chat to people. Go and visit things that interest you, uh, whether they be meetups, whether they be specific lectures. Um, if you see something that's cool, uh, don't just sit by, go and actually speak to the speaker yeah. and try and contact them or take them out for a coffee and go talk to them. Okay. So figure out what interests you, where you can spend a lot of time researching and actually learn that you care about. Build your knowledge, get yourself out there, networking, meeting people, um, what else is there? Oof. Um, I like to I like to surround myself with security, what I want to be doing. So um, just a, a quick example was that you know when I, I started my job here, uh, or my work here, should I say, um, I moved out of home and I, I moved straight into the CBD, um, you know, where I live alone. And it was just, you know, enough time just to study hard. So OSCP, any of the war games, um, I got just cut out the travel time of my day and I just sat and studied as much as I could. Um, I talked about the Christmas presents before, but let people know that's what you want. You know, you're interested in, in hacking books uh, or security books for Christmas or for birthday gifts. Um, become that person who when you see things you think of security and people see you and think of security as well so surround yourself in, in every way you can with that um i had to do small things like cut out gaming time and all just to surround <laughs> myself with it but it pays off and you find yourself loving it more and more um, depending on how you approach it networking is really important um, going to network events meetup groups conferences but i think it's it's one thing going 
to a networking event, it's another thing being involved, participating. Um, I mean, one of the things that's really impressed me about you is that you've basically put yourself out there. And you, uh, very early on when we met you know, quite a while ago, is you told me that you go out there and you talk to a stranger a day. Um, so you're actually making yourself vulnerable and, and striking up conversations. It's, it's very impressive. Yeah, I, I mean, I found that one of the hardest things, um, <laughs> believe it or not. I, I grew up uh, in a homeschooling kind of environment, so I didn't go to you know, real school with real people. Um, and so by the time you know I moved over to Australia, we continued homeschooling right up until almost the end of school. So um, while I had a few kind of social interactions, when I actually went up to talk to people, specifically girls, um, I would just freeze. It, it, it was really hard to actually uh, speak to people. So um, I started doing something which was trying to force myself to speak to a stranger today. Um, you know, one random person, whether it was in the elevator, um, at the you know at the skate park, or you know, in a taxi, whatever it might be, just striking up a conversation with them. And funnily enough, some of them have become you know, either friends or, or mentors, that kind of thing. I've got some funny stories about that. Um, but you know that that definitely helped breaking the ice, so I could go up and speak to someone. But then I couldn't actually carry on the conversation. I couldn't um, figure out how to tell them about my interests without looking almost proud, or you know, um, I don't know. It was a strange kind of kind of thing. So I found after about a year of university um, and still kind of failing at this area, uh, I wasn't doing that great, especially if I wanted to do good at social engineering, which was one of the things I was you know looking into. Um, so I went and forced myself to get a sales job. Um, now sales and marketing are usually seen as the guys who are snake oil. Sorry, anyone in sales and marketing, but uh, they're usually seen as the guys who will push stuff on you and you know all that. But the underlying value there that I saw is they're able to talk to anyone mm -hmm. and they're able to have that conversation. Usually, um, it can be genuine conversations. It doesn't have to be all flashy. So I worked in the sales job. Uh, doing human interaction, I would have to actually talk to people for half an hour. Can you believe that? Like strangers. <laughs> but it worked out okay. Um, and after a while of doing that, I was able to uh, knock up a conversation with anyone who needed. Good. As, as a salesperson and uh, <laughs> someone who might be viewed as selling snake oil, um, I think one of the big things to help with conversations um, is just open questions. I think listening. Is essential. I think try and get the other person to speak. Um, so, like, big advice to anyone: like, if you're going to an event, meetup group, you don't know anyone, um, just come kind of talk to someone and say hi. Like, who are you? What do you do? Yeah. Or, you yeah. Know, what, what did you think of that presentation? Or, um, you know, have you done that before? Um, just have a normal conversation. It's it's really really difficult, but I think the closer you can get from moving from just being Somewhere in attending to participating, yeah. the more chance you've got of building relationships. Oh yeah. And it's those relationships that are gonna see you through in terms of recommendations for if your company's hiring and you know, you know, such and such has been to a meetup group for the last six months and they've spoken to you numerous times, they've shown their passion, you're gonna have interest in recommending that mm -hmm. to your manager. And it, it's it's not a bad thing to go up to someone and, and start talking about yourself. Obviously, try and listen, but if yeah. they're a closed door, um, you know, I find I can be a closed door sometimes myself, and the person just keeps talking about what they like, what they're mm. currently doing. You know, you start figuring out you've actually got a bit of a likeness there, or you're interested in what they're saying. Mm. So um, don't feel bad about going up to someone you know, wearing a suit and looking very, um, you know, businessy and just saying, I've been working on this, it's really cool, and... But then I guess showing the effect that it would have on, on them or the industry as well. So, um, yeah, be vulnerable, but also don't be afraid to be a little bit confident and tell them what you're working on is actually really cool. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's easy to say this, but what's the worst case scenario? You, know, you, you, you go into a meetup group or an event or something, you go and talk to someone. What's the worst case? They, they don't talk to you back. That, that a killer an introvert something. No, 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 no. But seriously, that you're right. Um, if they, you know, if they don't talk to you or something, um, then you at least know, you know, your business isn't there and it's going to be belong to someone else. They can talk to someone else. Yeah. So it was more, it was more getting experience before you're actually working for the company um, or working on their technology and that kind of thing, because I found that you know. Back in uni, I used to make, you know, create my own honey pops using, you know, either talks I'd seen and stuff like B sides and and particles gone, or you know, building my own servers to try and find out, you know, how Active Directory worked, that kind of thing. But you did this before working. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Nice work. Well, you you got to unless I didn't realize at the time, but then when you actually start work yeah. and you, you can say you can put your hand up and say yes, I'm entry level, but I'm able to do some of these. Um, they're going to be very happy, obviously. Um, but a lot of the time, it just gave me this insight as to I know what kind of job I'm actually applying for because if they say something like you know it's a pen testing role, but um, you're going to be re- working with you know some of these uh, development things, you know DevOps. If I didn't really know what that involved beforehand, I may have gotten put into a role I don't want to get. So when I get told I'm doing a role which is consulting, you know, on many technologies, many times a day, the technologies I know about, I know I can do that job, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to. Um, make them feel uh, not impressed in my first year of working there or something like that. Yeah. So definitely getting hands-on experience with those technologies before you step into there is very possible. Um, you can do free things. You can use a quantum computer online for heck's sake. So you can practice with anything um, before you go into the industry. It's, it's, there's, there's so much out there and I think the biggest thing you've done is not necessarily the, the technology itself, but it's the willingness to learn. You know, you're, you're demonstrating your passion by going to actually do things. Uh, people talk about passion, but it's one thing talking about it, it's another thing demonstrating it. Mm. So that's really good. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I think there's also a lot of um, people who see hand-holding as a, a good way to get into this industry, especially um, you know back at university. Sometimes people feel they need to be fed that information. But I think it's it's that hunger for when you, you want to know that kind of stuff before you actually get yeah. fed it, that you're going to go and find it. Um, and the best way to get that, and I've, I've consistently said this about um, people earning good salaries and investing their money to be able to get training and that kind of thing, is that usually when I sit down with a person they explain something to me, they might not knock off ideas that I had swimming in my head for eight months but never actually figured out about you know certain technology or how to do something. So I feel like... Um, People can really get you there if you go out and talk to them. They can solve, you know, your problems with you know, memory corruption or whatever it might be before you actually go and learn it. So um, talk to people, keep chasing that idea of I don't know this and I want to know it, um, and find out what you don't know is there. Cool. Well, Mike, thank you for your time. Sure. And uh, well, listen out for the next instalment of Hacking into Security. Take care.